this morning. I said, I feel God in this place this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. What a worship. What a worship this morning. Good morning once again. Great faith and to all of you, our visitors. Good morning to all of you who are viewing by Facebook and YouTube. Good morning and happy Pentecostal Sunday. Let the fire fall. Did you feel the fire falling this morning? Come on, put your hands together and give God a great hand of praise. Ooh, Jesus, this is the birth of the church. My God, we ought to be glad in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen once again. Come on. Oh, come on, visitor. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. You are welcome to Big Faith, the place where miracles happen. Amen. amen. If you need a miracle in the house today, you can get it right here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Once again, thank you for coming and God bless you. May the Lord continue to bless each and every one of you who are viewing and who are here this morning. Now today is a special day in the life of Christian faith. And so this morning I want to minister on the importance of Pentecost. Somebody say Pentecost. Pentecost. The importance of Pentecost, the descending of the Holy Spirit. I want you to look with me in the book of Acts 2. We're going to read from chapter from verses 1 through 8. The book of Acts, New Testament, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. When you find it, say amen. amen. Nobody find it yet? <laughs> Come on. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, right there. Amen. amen. Verse 1 reads, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. suddenly. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Somebody say, every nation, every nation. under heaven. Amen. Now when this was noised aboard, the multitude came together. And when they confronted, because that they... Every man heard them speaking in their own language, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these men which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own town, wherein we were born. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we honor you for this beautiful day where we can celebrate. Pentecost, the day that the church was bust. But we honor you to morning. We glorify you. We give you thanks that, that we can be here and your Holy Spirit can walk in this place today. We ask your blessings upon each person, even as they hear the word. We pray that their lives will be changed and they will never be the same again because of Pentecost. Bless us now. Bless your word. Bless even me, your maiden servant. I pray for a fresh anointing, a fresh oil, fresh fire, that I may be able to speak your word with the oracles of God, and lives once again will be changed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Pentecost, the birth of the church. Now there are four annual events on calendars that the Christian faith celebrates. There is Christmas, the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ unto us is born this day in the city of David, a child who is Christ the Lord, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Number two, there is Good Friday, the celebration of the death of Jesus Christ. Number three, there is Easter, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God 
ultimate victory over sin and death. And today, number four, the fourth event is Pentecost. It's the Christian festival celebrating the descending of the Holy Spirit on the disciples after Jesus' ascension seven Sundays after his ascension. Seven Sundays. Amen? Amen. And so today is also called Whit Sunday. Another term for Pentecost. That's why tomorrow you will be celebrating what? Whit Monday. Amen? Am I right? Now, if we the believers stop observing Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter, there will be a whole lot of talking. Am I right about that? Every church you hear celebrate Christmas, Easter, and what else? Good Friday. Amen? But not every church celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost is the fourth annual event for the Christians. Amen? And you could can you imagine just going through the year? We probably went through the year on 2020 without having Christmas and Good Friday and the Resurrection Easter Sunday. Can you imagine that going through the whole year and there is no celebration? But I realize that nobody, no church, no Christian wants to go through the whole year and not celebrate Christmas. How many of you know everybody like Christmas? Eh? Some people drink and don't think on Christmas, my God. And so Christmas is a time of celebration. It's a time that we celebrate the birth of Christ, but some people celebrate some other stuff, but it's still Christmas. Am I right about that? And then there is a Good Friday when we celebrate the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because without a death how many of you know there can never be a resurrection amen and so three days later they celebrate resurrection and now it is seven Sundays and we are now celebrating what? Pentecost, Pentecost. somebody say the birth of the church the birth of the church how many of you know without Pentecost there would be no birthing of the church. Amen? Amen? And so we want to celebrate this morning. And so I want us to look at four. We're going to go right into our message. And as we celebrate Pentecostal Sunday, the sending of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church, I want to point out four important events that happened when the power of the Holy Ghost came. You know, I used to be a prophecy church member. That's Pentecostal prophecy. And they talk about the Holy Ghost people speaking tongues. You have some church, they think you're, you're crazy if you don't speak in tongues. They'd be like, why all of that? But how many of you know that's the fire of the Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> Number one, the first one I want to point out, I want you to look with me, stay with me. We write in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now notice the Holy Spirit did not come until the believers were all on what one accord. The first one I want to point out is that the Holy Ghost came for everyone. Amen? Amen. They saw the Holy Ghost. Let's read that again. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it fell the house where they were sitting. Filled the house. How many of you know that they saw? People say you can't see wind. You feel it. But they saw the Holy Ghost. 
Now, what does it mean with us being on one accord in one place? With one accord is a compound word meaning the same passion. Any of you know, in the church of the living God, no matter how small, no matter how big, we have to be on one accord. We have to have the same mind. We have to want the same thing. We can't be pulling and hauling in order for the Holy Fire, the Holy Ghost to fill the temple, in order for the Holy Ghost to do its work among God people, we have to be on one accord. Am I right, right about that? Amen. You can't be pushing and pulling the choir wants to sing this. One person saying, no, we don't want to sing this. We want to sing that. No, we got to be on one accord. That's how the Holy Spirit operates. Amen? Amen. When we have the same passion, the same mind, and the same goal, the power of the Holy Spirit would manifest itself. I want to ask you a question today. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Do you have the Holy Ghost within you? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? And that's my question to the church today. That is my question to every person on this Pentecostal Sunday. Do you have the Holy Ghost? When the pouring of the Holy Spirit comes, there will be changes. How many of you know that? If the Holy Spirit doesn't come, when we call the altar call to do the work, how many of you know the sick would not be healed? Huh? No, no sickness would be healed because it's the power of the Holy Spirit that liveth in me that when I rest hands on you, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. Now let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is tree in the triune. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. How many of you know we are important? We are the highest being on earth. Because why? We have a God living within us. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe that you have a God living in you? Yes. Huh? When you, when you? When you extend your hands, that, that God that is in you is telling you to feed the hungry and, 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 and visit the sick and all. The Holy Spirit is working through you. Amen? Amen? And so they saw they were all on one accord. And so because they're all on one accord, they didn't see nothing different. They saw the move of God. Amen? Amen. And that's what we have to do in the, in the ministry, you know. When we leave from here, we can't talk about what happened to that one, what that one did. Oh, that one pray and make a mistake. We're not perfect. We are not perfect. Am I right about that? That's nothing to talk about that. For somebody to be able to stand up, to pray, we got to give God glory. Amen? Amen. Because a lot of times, people are afraid to do it. And so if someone bold enough to do it, I think we ought to give God praise for them. I hear people talk about preachers. Oh, that one can't preach. This one, why don't you come here? See what you could do. <laughs> Come on, am I right about that? You talking about who can preach? Let's see how you can preach. Amen? The Holy Spirit does not work like that. What the Holy Spirit does is, people, if the pastor didn't say something right, you pray, you pray, you pray, and you ask God, God help her. Amen. God help him. Come on, and it's not a joke. We don't say that because it's a joke. We ask in the Holy Spirit to help the preacher so that the word can go forth and lives can be changed. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. And if you're going to keep pulling the pastor down, pulling the preacher down every Sunday, pastor, you, you, what you say, you say that wrong, you know. But we we open for some kind of stuff, but ain't nobody perfect. Sometimes we we say uh, uh, um, Jonah swallowed a whale instead of saying the whale swallowed Jonah. But because we do that, they be they laugh and they say, "You hear that pastor say?" Okay, they just mix it up a little bit. So there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Amen. Number one, everybody, what hood? Say that everybody hood. 
the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's number one. Acts 2. We stand there now. Verse 3 reads, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as, like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. When the power of the Holy Ghost came, number two, everyone saw the Holy Spirit. The first one I said saw, the first one is heard. Did I say? They heard, right? They heard the Holy Spirit. The wind was blowing. They heard the Holy Spirit. The second one is when the power of the Holy Spirit came, everyone saw the Holy Spirit. The disciples and the fellows of Jesus saw the fire of the Holy Ghost resting on every person. If you know, if we be on one accord, the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit fall, nobody will be left out. Every person will be blessed. Every need will be met when the Holy Spirit fall. Am I right about that? Yes. They saw the Holy Spirit. Now let's prove it. I want you to look at John 14. To the book of John 14, verse 16 and 17. If you don't have a Bible, I'll read it. I want to show you some stuff. It says, was 16 and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth the Holy Spirit whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not <laughs> neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth within you and shall be in where the Holy Spirit live now? The Holy Spirit lives in me. And later on, I'm going to tell you how you could get that Holy Spirit. Now, back in the day, I want you to, um, Exodus 3, 2. The Holy Spirit did not live in us. Only when Jesus came and the Holy Spirit came, the 120 in the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's when we received the Holy Spirit. Now, back in the day, in the Old Testament, in Exodus 3, 2, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Moses, in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses saw the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost fire meant something very important. When the Holy Spirit came back in the day, like Samson, the Holy Spirit just rest on them. And after they would have done what God had them to do, the Holy Spirit would leave them. Y'all hear me? But in this time, after Jesus came, the Holy Spirit don't just come and rest on us and leave us. The Holy Spirit abides in us. The Holy Spirit takes up residence in us. The Holy Spirit is living within us. And that's the reason why if the Holy Spirit is living in us, we can't cuss out our neighbors. Jesus, Lord, it ain't like back in the day, the Holy Spirit, when you start cussing. And I believe today if you got the Holy Spirit and you're cussing out your neighbor, I don't think you got the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on now. Because if you got the Holy Spirit, you would not have that kind of thing in you. I remember now. The devil and God cannot live in the same house. How many of you know that? Come on, some people want well, cuss with the same mouth and praise God with the same mouth. <laughs> they just finished cussing and they say, oh God, you, God can do this for me. God can do that for me. You better know what God you're talking about. Because if you're talking about Jehovah, Yahweh, that God don't operate like that. You got to have that love in you when your neighbors seem to come against you. You got to have enough Holy Spirit in you to say, that's okay. You know, you hurt, they hurt you, but you still say, that's okay. Amen. You don't hold that against them and say, you know, I, I'm going to burn the house down. I'm going to kill the cat. I'm going to kill the rat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy them. You know, that's the devil with to say that. <laughs> the enemy who says that I, you know, I used to say that one time I'll burn your house down <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy but when the Holy Ghost get a hold of you you don't want to see that person else burn down you want to see that person get saved Amen. as much as they don't like you or as much as y'all have fallen out 
You don't want to know you're going to heaven and they're on their way to hell. The Holy Spirit will not allow you to have that kind of heart to, to want somebody to go to hell. Amen? Amen? And so, the Holy Spirit is here today to help us people. There's a lot of things that we cannot help ourselves with, but the Holy Spirit is here to help us. Am I right about that? Amen. I say the Holy Spirit is here to help Russian Vin. I heard it. I saw everything rocking, 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 and I was afraid. I admitted that I was afraid. Amen? When I see that water coming, I say, oh my God. My husband will tell you. <laughs> but they heard the rushing of the Holy Spirit, and that's how the Holy Spirit comes. And then number two, what? They saw the Holy Spirit. Amen? They saw the fire of the Holy Spirit resting on every person. Amen? Amen. Number three, we're almost there. Acts chapter two, and we're going to look at verses four, and it reads, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the power of the Holy Spirit falls, number three, everyone felt the Holy Spirit. And they felt. See what it says? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So if the Holy Spirit in you, you know, I always say sometimes when we begin to speak in tongues, the whole church speak in tongues, and I said, you know, if we just believe in speaking in tongues, if we just could believe no, how... If you, if you got the Holy Spirit in you, you can take something which you have on, and you can wrap somebody in it, and they can be healed. I can take this handkerchief, and you know what people say? Who she thinks she is, the Holy Spirit in me. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Am I right about that? Amen. I say, am I right about that? Yes. The Holy Spirit does its work. But the first one was, everyone did what? Holy Heard the Holy Spirit. The second one, everyone what? Saw. Saw the Holy Spirit. The third one what? Everyone what? Felt. Felt the Holy Spirit. Number four, Acts 2. Verse 4, B. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the power of the Holy Spirit came, everyone spoke. <laughs> did y'all see that? Hmm? Y'all didn't see that. Everyone had the power to speak when the Holy Spirit comes. You can speak the God language when the Holy Spirit comes. You can take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and you can declare the Word of God that no weapon that form against me and my family shall prosper. That's the Holy Ghost. You can what? Speak the Word of God. Amen. That's what you do, people. You don't have to go around feeling defeated. Oh, I, 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 I can't do this. I can't. If you got the power of God in you, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who do what? Strengthens me. Ain't nothing you can't do. Nobody can come in your face and tell you nothing if you got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Hmm? I might say be consumed in the mighty name of Jesus. And then when I see you consume, I'll say live. <laughs> but I just want to show you that the power of the Holy Spirit will do his work for you. Right. Amen? Amen? You could stop a moving car. I told I told the story before, not on, on, on TV or Facebook or to the church, but I know I was driving behind, you know this years now, this truck with this big satellite dish on the back of it, and I keep looking at the satellite dish. I say, this dish can fall. I say, that satellite dish can fall. That satellite, and that satellite dish fall, and I was able to sway my car. You got so much power, you better be careful. Come on, you got to be careful what you said. Am I right about that? 
That's how much power people we have. I don't know why Christians feel like they are so weak and so feeble and that they can't do nothing. You can do it. You can speak the word and something can happen. Whatever you want to happen in your life. No mind people say, oh, this, that, you do it. No, 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 no. You got the Holy Ghost in you. And so you could stop a car from hitting you. Am I right about that? Amen. And I, I, I said, why would people believe that the devil could stop the car, but don't believe that God could stop the car? Come on, people. You, 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 when you go to, I, I've never been there. People tell me that those people, some of the persons that this practice, that's their religion. They believe in what they do. If we as Christians could just believe in what we do, we can have more power than any demon on the face of the earth. Am I right about that, people? Come on, man. Let's practice this, this, this God that we have in us. This is not the devil. This is God that is living with us and he is what all and when he came and he put the church, he didn't put us to sit down and let people take advantage of us. He put the church to give us the power to go forth and do what he has called us to do. He said, I give you power. He said, I give you power to walk upon serpents. They would not hurt you. I give you so much power. They can give you a deadly drink to do a deadly thing to drink and it will not kill you. People, when are we going to believe that the Holy Spirit in us is here to protect us? I don't care. I can walk on anything. My husband will tell you, I sit in the back of the yard. I see the snake walking. I still sitting down. <laughs> One time ago, I used to be scared of them. I said, my Bible tells me I am the highest being and them snakes belong under my feet. Am I right about that? Yeah. I know one time he put the snake by, by my car door. Because he thought I'm a big snake. He must have killed it. And he put it right by my car door. So when I get it, he thought I said, Ooh! You know what I did? I go and get a piece of snake. I take the snake. I pick it up. And I take it and throw it in the bush. And I tell him, Am I right about, Am I talking the truth, Barry? <laughs> I said, like, I scared of any snake. The snake ought to be scared of us people. People in the world, when you walk, they ought to be scared of you because of the power of God that liveth and walketh in you, the Holy Spirit. I don't have to be scared of that. Let me tell you, I get up 5 o'clock, I put on my, my tights and my t-shirt, I go and walk at 5 a.m. One time ago, I never do that, but you don't go, I, I scared, I good. You tell you that, I say, baby, you go with me? You know, I go, I say, see you when I get back. 5 a.m. Because no weapon, no demon can touch me. Am I right about that? <laughs> and this, one time I was walking, this gentleman, he ran up behind me and I was walking. He said, Miss, I come and I don't want to make you scared. I was like, make who scared? You can't make me scared. I'm not afraid of you. You cannot be afraid. Don't be scared of the people on your job. They can't do you nothing. When I was working, I worked on a job for 23 years, and I tell them straight and plain, when I'm ready to leave this job, I'm going to leave. Nobody is going to fire me. you got to speak with authority. You know, at that time, I wasn't even this much high in court. So you know what's going on now. What would you say to Sister Lydia? You know devil could do us nothing, right? Because she would walk like this. I know she would walk. <laughs> She, she would walk up to you and say, brother, what you said? Amen. I'm telling you, Amen. that's the Holy Spirit. You don't have to fear nothing. Amen? Amen. So, that's the four things I want you to, to tell you what the Holy Spirit will do. And if, come on, y'all, tell me what the first one is. The first one was, everybody what? Hey. The second one? So. And the third one? Yeah. And the fourth one, everybody? Come on, come on, come on, come on. What I say but speaking power out your mouth. Everybody spoke. Spirit. You all got that? So when you get out 
get it, see? And somebody come up all up in your face, and they know you as a Christian, and they think you scared. You say, brother, I ain't scared of you. <laughs> I'll give you a good fight. You got to always remember that there is always some fight left inside of you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit liveth and worketh through you. Amen? Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a great time for praise. God is good. You know, I got up this morning and I, got, I haven't felt this good for but three weeks. I got up this morning and I was like, God, you put the church day of Pentecost. I said, let the fire fall. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost power fall on your people. Is there anybody in here today, even online, need the Holy Ghost to fall upon you? Just say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. fill me. Fill me. If you're not filled, Paul, Paul, talk about, he said, he asked the disciples them, he said, let me see where, where this chapter is. Go to her. The book of Acts 2. You there right now, right? Mm -hmm. No, let's go to the book of Acts 19. I want to I can close this with 1 and 2. I want you to see this. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, there's ways that you can get the Holy Spirit. Now, this is Paul. That's Acts 19. Just flip over a couple of chapters, 1 and 2, and it reads. And it came to pass, read it with me. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Now read that next part. I will hear you. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard, My God, isn't that the same thing happening today? The church, the Holy Spirit came to give us power. But these disciples, Paul said, Y'all have y'all received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And who the answer was? We have not even heard that there was a Holy Ghost. My God, I would pray that the churches would put these four events in so that the people of God can have this power that is gifted to them that Jesus, when he was leaving, he said, I go, but I would send the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And when I send this comfort, when I send the Holy Spirit, I did not just send it for you to get material things. I send this power for you to go on the highways and the byways and compel man to come. And he said, Hello, <laughs> Jesus. He said, You don't have to be afraid. He said, Because, Lo, I will be with you always. Even, come on, finish that for me. Even, yeah. even unto the end of the ages. The Holy Spirit, people. When you get up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Start your day with a good morning to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Now, Paul said, now, the word 6 says, 7 and 6 of Acts 19, that same one, it says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. You see how that Holy Spirit could be? Paul lay on hands, he laid hands on, he had the Holy Spirit, and somebody who, who want to lay hands on you, if you, you can ask God yourself to fill you with the Holy Spirit. But if you don't feel like you can do that, your leader, if he or she is filled with the Holy Spirit like Paul, it can be what? Passed, imparted, 
impartation. It can be imparted unto you. Amen? Amen. Anybody in here filled with the Holy Spirit today? Amen. You got the Holy Spirit? Amen. Come on, you're filled with the Holy Spirit? You say it, you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Brother, come on, put your hands together and give God a hand clap. Praise. Amen. And many nobody in here cussing on their neighbor. Amen? Because we got the Holy Spirit. God bless you today. If you're even sitting in here today and you don't know God in a personal way, because first of all, you have to know God and accept Jesus Christ into your heart before you can get the third and the triune, the Holy Spirit. First, you have to have Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you're out there today, or if you're in here today and you don't have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is a good thing. This Pentecostal day, the day that the church was born. This is a good day because you can remember this every time that you accept Christ on Pentecostal Sunday. Amen. So if, it, if you're here today, if you're not saved, you can lift your hand. We're not going to ask you to do nothing. We'll just pray for you. If you're here today and you know, don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can lift your hand. We will pray for you. And for those of you who are watching by YouTube or by Facebook, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you today. And I want you to pre repeat after me as I pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, I recognize, I recognize that, I that I need a Savior. I recognize that I need the Holy Spirit in my life. I recognize that if I die today, I would not make heaven. And so Jesus, I open my heart to you. Come in today. Come in to stay. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving my soul and making me whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you once again. We give you praise. We honor you. We thank you once again for this beautiful Pentecostal where we can celebrate the birth of the church. We thank you for every person that is here that heard your word. God, we pray that their lives would be transformed and they would know that the power of the Holy Spirit liveth in them, not just for them to sit back, but for them to go forth and do the work of the Father. Bless each and every one of us, and even those who are watching by live stream, we ask God that you would meet every need, every financial need, heal every sick body, save those who are lost because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that it's already done. We give you thanks once again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all of God's people say, once again, put your hands together and give God a big hand.